Let's love. Hey. Amen. We love you, Lord. It's too much. God is faithful. He's an awesome God. I just appreciate him. I just wanted to sing that song just to get myself in the right mood, you know, to talk to you all. Amen. You know, sometimes you have those one of those days that just want to stop you from doing what you're used to doing, you know, but you just have to rise above it. And I hope I've done that tonight by coming up on there because I almost did not make it, but I, I had to push myself to get here tonight. So I hope that we'll be able to share together. I don't like it to be quiet. I want you to talk to me as I talk to you. As you know already, this is the Dynamic Woman Show. Amen. Make sure you share it. And as God's my strength said last week, Mama's Couch. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Share it with your friends and family. Let them know that we are live on air. And I know as we're growing, more people will join in the conversation. Amen. My topic tonight is let us reason together, power of consistency. Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome. I want you to share your thoughts. I want you to share your experience as I share with you my experience as well. And uh, remember, yes, I'm a pastor's wife. Yes, God has granted me the grace to be on this platform to speak to you. But doesn't mean that I'm perfect. Doesn't mean that I know it all. It's the grace of God that has positioned me here to speak to you about these things. And whatever topic the Lord is raised in my heart is because I believe someone out there needs to hear it. And I believe tonight you will be encouraged. Tonight you'll be edified. Tonight will not just be that you came online at this hour to listen to Reverend Joseph in Enuma, but to hear the spirit of God for this season for your life. Amen. Let's just bow our heads quickly in prayer. I just want to commit this to the Lord Almighty. The topic tonight is power of consistency. Lord, we won't just hear, but we'll begin to experience this word in our life in the name of Jesus. I pray that every soul, every hear that will hear me on this platform tonight, that their life be transformed, oh God. I ask that the, what comes out of me will not be of myself, but of your spirit, oh God, that you alone will touch your people, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. They will live from here and do that that you have commanded them to do, Lord. They would consistently be consistent with you, Almighty Father, and in their journey and their work with you, in Jesus' name. You won't just be a hearer of the word, but you will also be a doer of the word, in the name of Jesus. Thank you again for being here. I am so blessed and thankful for having you on this platform. Welcome, Prophet John. Thank you for joining in as well. Please share, share with your friends and family as I encourage you tonight. The topic is power of consistency. What does that mean to you? What do you understand by the power of consistency? What is it to be consistent? The Bible talks to us about consistency, and I'm going to be sharing a few Bible passages with you tonight on consistency and what it means to be consistent. Amen. I want you to share and, and also encourage others to join in in this conversation. And anywhere you've also experienced, you know, the power of consistency and what it has done for you in your area of work, in your business, in your career, with your family, you know, even with your journey with the Lord Almighty. I want you to share as you watch. Amen. So power of consistency. First, let me define what is what is it to be consistent or what does it mean to be consistent? I went on Google, as you know, according to google.com, <laughs> consistent means action or done in the same way over time, especially so as to be fair and accurate. Amen. So to be consistent is to be doing the same thing over and accurate, especially to be fair and accurate, same way over and over and over again. Amen. And to be, con to, to have consistency is to do the same thing over and over again, repeatedly, continuously to get the results you're desiring. Amen. 
so let me just share this quickly so others watching can also follow amen bear with me one moment please because i want people to join on this conversation and also be blessed with what we're doing here tonight please if my voice goes low at any point do let me know so i can you know project a bit more so you can hear what i am saying thank you ladies still thank you for joining us please share as you watch amen god bless you all bear with me two seconds and i will be right back with you that's it okay i'm done i can focus now so what is the power of consistency and how can we relate that to our daily activity to what we do as christians to our work and our journey and implementing that not just because we're christians and you know there are things we can do to grow as a christian but also how do we use the power of consistency in our own personal life in our relationship in our career in our business in our parents parenting methods in as being a wife being a girlfriend in courtship how can i use the power of consistency and what does it mean to have consistency firstly i'm going to make reference to the bible passage first corinthians 15 58 if you type here up first corinthians 15 58 amen this bible passage is very important to me and it's something that encourages me to keep going first corinthians 15 58 says therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain and in the lord is not in vain in the lord whatever you do oh welcome gideon Corbena. thank you for joining in today whatever you do is not in vain but you need two key things he says steadfast steadfastness steadfastness means to keep going, to remain in that thing, even when it's not as, as you wish it to be, or it's not as nice as you may want it to be, but to remain steadfast in it and unmovable. That is very important in understanding tonight what we're talking about in terms of consistency. You cannot be moved by emotions to be consistent. I'm going to get to it. Bear with me as I'm taking you through the journey tonight of the power of consistency. I want you to transform your life and help you to reach that destination and that place you desire yourself to be. So what do I mean by cons um, consistency? I've talked talk to you about the meaning of being consistent and what it means to grow. Welcome, Kojo. Ko Kojo. Ko junior god bless you i couldn't say your name too much bless you thank you for joining in you know the power of consistency what does it mean to be consistent it means to be consistent doing the same way welcome melissa to do the same thing over time repeatedly to get a particular result amen so as a christian if you can shout out some ways you think we can be consistent i want you to get involved i want to hear your thoughts what does it mean to be consistent as a christian what do you understand about consistency i want to hear from you tonight what in your journey have you done as a christian to help you remain consistent what is the power of consistency in your walk with christ what are you doing or should be doing to help you be consistent i want to hear your thoughts as i continue to speak amen so what do you do to be consistent what as you have you committed to the lord and remain consistent in what direction are you going in your journey with god where you need to be consistent these are the questions i'm asking you tonight welcome robbie israel these are the questions i'm asking you tonight what are you doing what decisions have you made in your journey with christ that to help you remain consistent what have what lifestyle changes have you made to help you remain consistent in your journey with christ because to be a believer to be in christ requires consistency there is nothing you you commit yourself to that you shouldn't be consistent in 
So as a child of God, we've given our life to Christ. We've said we are a believer. Welcome, moving water. We are believers in the Lord. We have said that this day we will, oh, God's my strength is listening to daily sermons to stay connected to God. Okay, that's one way of staying connected to God. Are you consistent in it? Have you been consistent in it? Are you doing it constantly or is it when and how or whenever you have the time to do it? That's a question for you. So I believe there are certain things we do in this world that we might think we're being consistent. But if we really look deep within, we'll see that we're not consistent in it. We do it whenever we get the chance to. In our journey, in our walk, in our sacrifices, is mostly when we're able to. Especially in the Western world, we, we, we do so much and, and get involved in so many activities. But the truth of the matter is, how many of them do we remain consistent in? How many of them do we continually do to get expected results? How many of them do we spend time in to continue to, to grow in it? Or when it's not working, we give it up. We stop doing it. We stop focusing on it again. We stop worrying about it because it's not working. That's not an excuse. Thank you, Gideon Kwaverna. Thank you so much for that. That is not an excuse. So what have you done differently? God is my strength said she listens to sermons, daily sermons, to help her remain consistent. So is she being consistent by listening to sermons? Is that all that is required to be consistent in Christ? Some of us are not consistent in our appearance. I've noted that some things that we as Christians might not know. No, there is more. Okay, I want, to, I want to hear from you. I want you to converse with me tonight. What else are you doing? I've listed some things down in, thing, in ways that we, or activities where we as Christians should be consistent or strive to be consistent in. So in our life, in our journey, by that I mean actions daily that we work on to be consistent things we commit ourselves to doing on a daily basis that will help us in our growth with Christ. But if we think about it, when you're doing something, your growth with Christ is also helping you in your personal life, you know, in your, in your growth personally, because I'll give you an example, praying in the spirit. That's one of them. Okay. So that's what you're doing, Gideon Kawena, to remain consistent. That's good. But how has that helped you? And how, what method are you using to keep it going consistently? And is it daily? Is it weekly? Is it monthly that you pray in the spirit? Welcome, James, James T. to 2016. God bless you. Um, what we do in our life, in our journey, what activities are you doing to remain consistent? Some of us are not consistent in our appearance. I mentioned that earlier. What do I mean by not being consistent in our appearance? Some of us dress the way the society are dressing. So today you might see someone dressed in a rocky, you know, funky way, and you, you change your image to meet that demand, to meet that look that you like. But the problem is because it's not from you, it's not your heart, it's not your being, it's not who you are, you cannot remain consistent in it. So how then can people see you and know who you are? Appearance is very important. When people see you, they judge you by your appearance. There's a saying that goes, you'll be addressed the way you are dressed. So if you're dressed in a particular way, there is an image of yourself that you're protruding to others to see. So if it's not coming from within, if it's not something that is from you, it's going to be difficult. I, I, I bet you can agree with me. And if you don't, please comment as well. I want to hear from you. You know, there are things in your appearance that you will see and you will look deep within. Is this me? Am I being committed to me? Those that know me know that I love long hearings. I'm committed to wearing long earrings. So when you see me, you will consistently see that appearance upon me. 
because it's something that I'm passionate about. It's something that is within me. It's my style. Is who I am. Now, I carry my natural air, as you can see on this video. Most people that know me will know that I am consistent. It's consistency staying true to yourself no matter the situation. Exactly, God is my strength. Staying true to who you are, your appearance, your being. Don't try and be someone else because they look better. Don't try and be someone else because they look beautiful. Don't try and be someone else because they are more attractive. Don't try and be someone else because, you know, the man will look at me and love me. You can't remain consistent in that. That will not allow you to be consistent. You're doing it to please. When you do something to please, there's no way of being consistent in it because you will do it for a couple of days and then you get tired of it. Then you move on to the next thing. And that's why I always encourage, especially women, don't do anything to please anyone. Be true to who you are, as God, has, God is my strength has said. Be true to yourself. Know yourself. Know what you want. So when you meet, you know, the person that, you know, is the love of your life or you're in a circle of friends, they can't change who you are. Yes, there'll be some slight changes, but it shouldn't be so obvious that they'll be like, oh, you're changing. You're not this person anymore. Because why? Your style has changed. You know, as you grow, your style will change. But you need to remain consistent in you. Then you know how to develop and grow in that style. Sorry, God is my strength. I missed that comment. The next question is, who is, is who am I to be consistent? The next question is, who am I to be consistent? Okay, that's something for you to find out. Who are you? Life with Jesus, welcome. Thank you for joining this discussion. We're talking about power of consistency. So you need to identify who you are. Welcome. Identifying who you are. Finding out who are you to develop in that person, to be able to grow in that person. Some of us are waiting, as you say, for husband. I want to be married. But you don't yet know who you are. Blessings to you, life with Jesus. God bless you. Welcome, joining us. You know, who are you? Who is the husband that you want to fall in love with? If you cannot identify that, he's going to come along and project to you his vision, his ideas of the person he wants you to be. And the next thing you know, you're changing who you are to please that person. Now, when you please that person, a time will come where you can no longer keep the appearance, the, the person you're trying to be for that person. You need to know who you are and that person needs to love you for who you are. Yes, they will. the husband is there. They're called groom. They will groom you to be the woman they want to see in you. But the qualities of what they're grooming need to already be in within. If it's not there, then them trying to change you will not work. Because you don't already have those qualities. You don't already possess the, 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 the raw materials for them to be able to groom into the diamond that they want. You know, you need to have within you the raw materials for you to project out the diamond that is already deposited in them to groom out of you. But if there is no raw materials within you, for what they imagine in their head as a diamond, they will constantly try to shape you to that diamond and there will be conflict because you can't remain consistent in it. I hope I'm ringing home to single ladies watching me tonight. You need to make sure you identify who you are by remaining true, be, being true to yourself and not just being true to yourself, being consistently consistent in who you are, identifying who you are, doing things, habits, picking up habits, daily devotions, affirmations, things that will, that will make you know this is who I am. And the man coming along will only make who I am better, not different. There is a difference in that. Being, becoming better you is not the same as being the same, different you. You know, there are things within you that you do now 
that might be different from what you do now in 10 years but there should still be a link people should still see you now and remember that who or see you in 10 years time and say who she's always had it in her or he's always had it in him because it's always there it's deposited within it might not have bloomed it might not have come out the way you expected it to you know or you might not even have identified it yet but there will always be someone that will say that know you from your past and see you doing well in the future and say ah i've always seen it she's always spoken a truth she's always been like that even though it might not be glaring is there within you so you need to identify that person and stay true to it write this write it down make it plain make it plain that either may regret it may run with it you need to make sure you write down your vision your ideas because these things get lost in translation in marriage because you're no longer being consistent with who you are you're no longer reminding yourself of who you are you're no longer talking to yourself of who you are so you come into a marriage and the ideology of the man's vision becomes your vision and instead of you identifying what you're meant to do by being you in that man's life you change who you are to please what you what you assume he wants you to be because re remember if two are brought together to become one there is a purpose for that institution i know i'm talking about marriage right now but i'm gonna go on to other topics i have down tonight so you've come together to become one to form one union to become one body now to come together means you're fitting into each other so to fit into each other means that what you need to know who you are he needs to know who he is and you're coming together to build something so amazing so now you changing completely is not the same person he fell in love with so by the reason of you completely changing means that he's lost the person he once knew and once identified with but you're doing it to please him but he doesn't want you to change he wants you to be you but a better you not a different you a better you i hope you take that with you tonight if you're in a relationship be a better you don't change who you are for nobody remain consistent in who you are in your business also in your career apply the same principles apply the same principle the bible says in proverbs 22 verse 29 see that thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before king and now we find out what is diligent diligent means it was derived from a latin word diligere which means to value highly and take delight in so what you value you will take delight in and what a lot of women i keep going back to women and i'm sorry about this what you don't know is that to remain consistent in something because i believe diligence bets consistency so to remain diligent in something is to have self-value so when you have self-value you will be able to what he said to have value highly and delight in you need to delight in yourself and have value in yourself to be able to remain consistently and passionate about that thing you need to have value in who you are and how can you have value in something you don't know something you haven't identified so you're single right now looking at marriage as i need to be married but let me ask you a question simple question do you value yourself and if you do what do you value in yourself what do you know about you that you know that this can only grow this can only be better not different and if there's anything within you right now that you would like to change that you don't want to be consistent in that you don't want to associate with yourself then you need to change it now not in marriage you need to change it now
I know I'm talking about marriage. I don't know. The Holy Spirit just took me to a different direction. But I believe it's for someone watching tonight. Maybe there is a question in your heart that you're asking about marriage and, you know, you don't want to change who you are and you're worried about going into a marriage and completely being a different person. The news is you don't have to be a different person. You just have to groom to become a better person. Raw material to diamond. Well, it's still the same diamond that is within the raw material. You know that they didn't change. It's still the same thing becoming beautiful. So you need to bloom into a better person. When you're diligent, you don't just do. You ensure that it is done right. So being consistent. Remember I said diligence births consistency. So to be diligent, you don't just do it. You do it out of passion. You do it because you want to do it. You do it right. So I believe consistency is something that is birthed from diligence. And with that, I also put down here that from consistency, we, it, it, it helps with, a, with living a productive life. Consistency helps you to live a productive life. Many people want to be rich, but they don't want to get up in the morning. They don't want to do anything. They want to sit on their ass and be rich. That is called stealing. I'm sorry to say, you you want to be rich. There is something you need to be doing now that will attract the wealth. Consistency for God to bless you with something. He needs to see something inside of you that will keep going. Even when the blessings of God reaches you, you need to keep it going. You need to wake up early. You need to be diligent in what you're doing. You need to remain consistent with it. It's not that money comes, then you become prideful. Because with God's blessing coming to you, and then you change who you are, chances are you're going to lose that blessing. Because you don't value what was already within you for that blessing to come to you. That thing that attracts the blessing is to remain, for that blessing to remain consistent. I hope you're understanding what I'm sharing with you tonight. And I hope that is making sense. So consistency is key to living a productive life. It's key to living. That's what God actually wants for us, to live a productive life. But to live a productive life means we have to carry the lifestyle. We have to understand what is within us, what we're able and not able to do, to remain consistent in it. And consistency is also relevant to breakthrough. Welcome, David. Thank you for joining us. Please share as you join. Amen. Consistency is also relevant to our breakthrough. Many of us want God to do something for us. But have you noticed that we only go to God sometimes when we need something or in want of something? But we don't remain consistent with God in our doing and what we... Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. In, in what we do. Sorry, Prophet just consistently do what I always do for him. Amen. <laughs> it brought me a hot water because I don't drink too much tea. Amen. So I consistently do that for him. So he's returning the favor. You see how I put that in? Consistency. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening tonight. I want you to share what it is that you're being consistent in. What activities do you do? What other things do you involve yourself in to remain consistent? You know, consistency brings about your breakthrough. Consistency is necessary in your obedience with God, which takes me back to our walk with Christ. Many of us are Christians, but we're only Christians by title, not actively walking with Christ. Welcome, J. Math. God bless you. We're not actively doing what is required of us as Christians. We're not consistently, bless you, we're not consistently being obedient to the word of God. We, we take in the, you know, or shall I say, we affirm that, yes, thank you, Jesus. I'm born again. I have now accepted as my Lord and Savior. We do all the affirmations, but once we do that, that's it. We think that's all that is required of us, but that is not the truth. As believers of Christ, there is so much more 
the Lord required from us. There is so much more the Lord wants us to do. How many of those things are we being consistent in? I found out that Muslims pray five times a day. But us Christians, we want to take over the world. We want to do things that will make us stand out and be on top. How many times do we pray a day? Or do we only pray when we wake up? And that is even a fast prayer. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up safely this morning. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. I give you adoration. But God, get ready for what I'm on. And I'm out. I'm on that journey. When next do we cut, you know, shout out Jesus? When next do we say, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing for me? When we're going to bed? Or something major happened. Maybe you, see, you saw an accident. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I'm not there. Thank you, Lord, that it, it didn't affect me. But if we remain prayerful consistently, would we need to make such prayer? Because we know that we're already covered. How many things are we doing to remain consistent in Him? We've heard on this platform, someone said, God's my sister said, she um, listens to sermons. Listening to sermons and being consistent in that, is it helping you to grow? What you're learning from the sermons, are you activating it in your personal life? Are you doing something with it? Or you're just listening? Because word goes in and is deposited, but by consistently hearing the same sermon over time, does that mean that you're not practicing what you're hearing? Or you just heard it, it sounds good, it's great, it motivates you for a second, you know, when sermons are good, they are good. <laughs> You're like, yes, oh, yeah. oh God, I'm going to take that word. I'm going to activate it. Oh my God, I'm going to go home and do it right now. Listening and trying to apply it into my life. Good. But some sermons you listen, you're like, oh man, that is revelation. I'm going to go home. I'm going to change everything. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. How long does it last? Welcome, worry. God bless you. How long does it last? Some people will go home and a week, things will change. I've been a victim. I'm not going to lie. You will change everything. This will be good. You will apply all the principles. Welcome. And what happened? DMZ, God bless you. Welcome. Thank you for joining in. What happened after that? You give up. You slow down. Life happens. Life takes over. And then before you know it, you start reducing what you're doing, what you're doing. Before you know it, you don't even know when you stopped. It just becomes another thing. And then we pick up something else and then we abandon it. And then we pick up something else and then we abandon it. But if we're not consistent in the little things, how are we being consistent in our obedience to God? How are we being consistent in our journey with God? Consistency, I said, brings a productive life. It makes your life, it gives you breakthrough. It helps you in your journey and your walk with Christ. Being consistent, the power of consistency. It opens your eyes to things that might not necessarily be there, but you can see it in the form of faith. When you're consistent, it births success. It activates your faith even the more in your consistency. Welcome, Paula, that night. God bless you. It, it activates your faith in God. You know, hello, McLaurin. God bless you. It activates your faith in God. You know that God is there for me. God is with me. God is guiding me. You're saying these words. You're believing these words because the more you say it to yourself, the more is there, the more you're believing it, the more it becomes a lifestyle. But many of us, we don't do that. It's only when something happens that we remember, oh, I can pray to God. Oh, I can go to church. Oh, I can evangelize. But these are the things that is required of us from the Lord, staying consistent in it. To grow as believers of Christ. We need to do more. When you're a parent, 
how consistent are you? When your child sees you that today mommy will say yes to that particular thing, tomorrow mommy will say no, and being attacked by jealous people. Hmm. God bless you. I pray for peace in the name of Jesus. But you need to elaborate. <laughs> How do you know they're jealous? Or it's just God preserving you to make you stand on a better platform. Hmm? We need to remain consistent in what we do. And that's what, what McLaurin just said about being attacked by jealous people. Welcome, Mrs. McLaurin. God bless you. Being attacked by jealous people. There are many of us that are Christians and doing the work of God and moving forward and being persecuted. And then we give up because we, want, we don't want that persecution. We don't want that hatred. We don't want that dislike. We don't want that negativity. We give up on our journey. But if God has graced you to be on that platform, if God has given you the, the, the strong will to move forward, Robbie Israel, God bless you. If God has given you that strong will to do what you're doing, should anything stop you? Diligence. Diligence is the value in what we do will help you to remain consistent. The value in what you do, whether you're hated, whether you're mighted, whether people persecute you, it doesn't stop your prayer life. Monday to Sunday, it does not stop it. Morning, afternoon, and evening, it does not stop it. Work was a bad day. Does that stop your prayer life? Welcome, Gideon Gabena. God bless you. Thank you for saying that. What stops you? I can't hear. Scope is breaking up. I'm sorry, McLaurin. God bless you. Keep watching. Please let me know if my voice is going in and out. I will try and keep it up. Amen. What stop you from remaining consistent? Life will get in the way, but should that stop your prayer life? If you've booked yourself in to pray Monday to Sunday, morning, afternoon, and evening, and you make it a lifestyle, you set your alarm clock that I'm going to pray 9 a.m., I'm going to pray 12 noon, and I'm going to pray at night. If you set yourself up for that, regardless of what you face, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of the situation, daily, the Lord is waiting for you at those hours. Imagine what you will be able to do. Imagine how fearless you will be. Discipline is important. This is why I say the power of consistency. Fighting against the, the negative will. Fighting against self and saying, regardless of what I face, I'm going to do it. Regardless of you commit yourself to it. When you commit to something, you remain consistent, diligent in it. You say to yourself, no matter what happens, is you and I, oh God. I remember when you made an appointment, appointed time with the Lord. Is there waiting for you? Is that time, that intimacy with him? Let me say this. Some of you will, will, will commit yourself to meeting a friend. You commit yourself to meeting a boyfriend. You commit yourself to meeting boss, colleagues, anybody. And you will be running late. You'll be questioning, oh my God, I'm running late. I need to call them to let them know that I'm running late. Why can't you commit yourself to God? But then again, that's what you did when you said, I give you my life, oh God. You committed yourself. But how committed are we really? That's another subject. If you cannot stay consistent in the little things, five minutes prayer consistently morning, afternoon, and evening will not kill you. It does not stop you from moving forward. It does not stop you from doing your job. It does not stop you or limit you from parenting your children. In fact, your children should get used to you having a quiet time with the Lord. They should know what is happening at this hour with mommy. Mommy does not miss it. Daddy does not meet this time with the Lord. It's daddy and those time. Maybe I'm going to actually put that on my clock or something where someone can see it. I'm busy. WhatsApp is unavailable. It's my time with the Lord. 
how proud are we to say it and remain consistent in it? We spend more time being truthful to our friends than being truthful to ourselves, being truthful to God. We need to identify where in our life we're not being consistent. Studying of the word of God. How consistent are you in your study with the word of God? How consistent are you with your study with the word of God? How often do you study the word of God? The Bible says study to show yourself approved. How are you studying to show yourself approved? Some of you don't even know what your Bible looks like. Because you only pick it up on Sundays. You don't know what Genesis is in the Bible and you're a Christian. How are you being a Christian? How are you a child of God? How are you a believer? How can you tell your friends about God if you know nothing about him? Consistency. The power of consistency will put you in a place of relevance. It will help you to be able to focus and share with your people, your friends, your family, what the Lord can do, the promises of God, being consistent in study of the word. If you dedicate 15 minutes per day to studying a verse from the Bible, it might take you time to finish the whole Bible, but that's what you've committed yourself to. 15 minutes is not much. 10 minutes is not, even if it's just five minutes you have to commit yourself to God in studying the verse a day. Imagine how far you will be. Imagine how many verses you will know by the end of the year. Minimum, minimum will be 365 verses from the Bible. Minimum. I work too much due to me being self-employed. Yes, but you have time to eat. You have time to use the toilet. You have time to take a dump. You have so much time to drink water. Why not use those time that you're in the toilet to just read a verse? Why not use that time that you're drinking a cup of tea to study a verse? Why not use that time that you're chatting to a friend to say, excuse me one moment, I just need to quickly do something. Your break hour, why not use that time, 15 minutes of that time to do something for the Lord? Or it's not even for the Lord, it's for yourself because it's your journey. It's the sacrifice you need to make, but it's a consistency consistency in the sacrifice there are many people that make sacrifice but they don't stay consistent in it mclaurin said you're speaking wisdom sister thank you consistency is pivotal and key many of us we commit so much but we don't stay consistent in any because it's so much you're trying to do a little bit little bit little bit little bit little bit and good evening to you, Fataki. Oh, God bless you. Welcome. How are you staying consistent? I've got down here, being in the presence of God. Hebrews 10, 25. Let's turn our Bible quickly to Hebrews 10, verse 25. Hebrews 10, 25. I want you to speak to me tonight. I don't just want to be talking at you. I want you to participate. I want to hear what you have to say about the power of consistency. How has it helped you? How has it improved your life? Being consistent. What has it done for you? Hebrews 10 verse 25, it says, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Amen. Thank you, Komi Torisin. God bless you. Welcome. How consistent are you? in the gathering of the saints. I know in the new computer age, the saints is online. <laughs> but even with that, we're not remaining consistent. John Enema says, consistency has made me stand out amongst and above my peers. Oh yes, in ministry, definitely. Personally, on the other hand, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Prophet is very committed to ministry, anything ministry. Ah. 
1,000%. But then, the balance. The balance. Shut up. <laughs> the balance. Again, that's another thing. That's my husband, by the way. Shout out to Prophet John Anuma. <laughs> we have to balance out. You know, like I said, when it comes to God and the things of God, my husband is 1,000% committed. He doesn't even eat because he's so much in the word. He's so much giving of himself to what God wants him to do. But like I said, there has to be balance between what you do for God and your own personal life. So you don't lose out. That's where people become overwhelmed. That's where people give up. That's where people say, oh God, I can't do too much. I can't commit to being a sister in the Lord. I can't commit to being a worker in church and having my own personal life and being burnt out and doing this and doing that. And there has to be a balance. Don't overcommit. I always say this to my you know mentors my mentees as you say i always say this to them do not overcommit. don't do or accept more than you can take do the little and do it well i'd rather you commit to one and do that one 100 percent than commit to 100 and give me zero percent it really angers me Commit to one, give me 100% in that one, and I'll be glad. Then you say, I can do 100 and give me 0%. You've done nothing. You've wasted time, energy, effort, lack of consistency. Please make sure to remain consistent. The power of consistency is also not overcommitting. Doing what you can, knowing your self-value, and sticking to who you are what you're able to do through faith you can do more through the grace of god you can commit to more but is knowing your limits allowing yourself to grow in capacity many do not allow themselves to grow in capacity they take on more than they can bear and when it gets too much they give up on everything now that's not knowing yourself that's trying to show off to somebody and when you show off to someone, <laughs> who are you impressing? It's you that lose out, not them. Bless you, Gideon. I'm glad you're feeling blessed. I'm glad that you're taking the word from this. And I hope it's not just hearing it, but using it to transform your life, using it to change yourself, giving more to your journey with the Lord. You need to find your area of strength and speciality, like Prophet just said, it will make you the best in that area. You need to find it. Identify it. Remember at the beginning of the scope I mentioned, identifying your value and sticking to it. Blossoming in it. Becoming a diamond from the raw material. Don't overdo. Don't give yourself too much. And then you do nothing. It doesn't help you to grow. It keeps you stagnated or dropping please please in your journey with the lord study find time in the day to study the word of god even if it's five minutes five minutes in 24 hours is nothing it could be on your journey to work it could be there is audio bible listen listen to that audio bible listen to it if you have no time to read, McClory was saying earlier that she's self-employed and she's overcommitted. Listening to the word of God is a way and a form of studying the word of God. Spend time in the toilet, that five minutes. My children know when I'm in the toilet, I say it's mommy's time, get away. Because it's my time, it's my cubicle. I want to be at peace in that bathroom i can spend 10 15 minutes in the bathroom what am i doing i'm hiding <laughs> it's mommy's private place don't come near <laughs> you need to know what is what if no one no one thing interests you then you, you have work to do if 
know one thing interests you and you're not passionate about one thing, you have work to do. You need to find, dig deeper into yourself. And the way to do that is spending time with God, asking God to help you identify this. I'm glad, McLaurin. I'm, I'm really glad that it's been a blessing to you. You need to identify. Spend time in that toilet and just, I know I'm using the toilet, but that's where I find my, you know, peace. When I need to escape, I go to the toilet because that's where it's supposed to be private, right? Keep the children out. Grace246, come in. Thank you. Welcome. God bless you. So we've mentioned, study the word of God, praying consistently. It says in the, in the word of God, praying without ceasing. Many of us pray. We are prayerful, but we're not really consistent. We pray when we wake up in the morning, when we go to bed, but that's prayer of thanksgiving. But what about praying in advance for something that you want? Praying in advance for your children. Praying in advance for that husband that haven't yet come to be. Praying in advance. is a Prayer is like a storage. You're storing up what you want to see. You're storing up in advance. Muslim pray five times a day. What are they praying about? They're just giving glory to God. They're praying in advance for their future. They're praying for what they want to see. They're committed to their prayer life and they are consistent in it. Their consistency puts Christians to shame because we, we want more. We have the sovereign God. We have a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask of him but yet we're not activating that power we're not activating that that strength we're not commanding it to be because we are prayerless even though we're saying we're praying be consistent in your prayer life be consistent in your worship i'm a worshiper by nature when i'm low I just want to listen to worship. When I'm down, I want to praise God. There's been moments, my husband, true talk, and he's on this platform. There's been moments he wake up in the middle of the night. I cannot sleep. I put on praise, and I'm dancing. I dance myself till I get so tired, I want to go to bed. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I'm consistently doing it. When he sees me doing that, he knows that, okay, she's got a lot on her mind. She needs to detox. So he knows that that's my detoxing method. He knows that that's the way that I deal. <laughs> and he's gotten used to it because over 10 years, he's seen it consistently. It's not something that he's, he sees once in a while. He knows that that's how she deals. And when I'm going through that moment, once he sees me praising God, he knows that I'll be fine. I'm cool. So it works every time. Just find yourself. I'm Yoruba by nature from Nigeria. I find myself some Yoruba praise and I just go, you know? When you're in the world, you dance to worldly music to get your mind off things. Why can't you dance and praise the Lord the same way? Blessings to you, Demetria. God bless you. How can you not dance and praise the Lord the same way, you know? There are things you'll be breaking down low in a club for. Why can't you break down low with you and God? <laughs> I do it all the time. If you see me dancing and rocking myself to um, praise, um, Nigerian praise. I love Nigerian praise because of the Afro beats in the background. If you see me dancing, you'll be wondering what's happening. Those that come to church will testify. I'm like, this is my zone. Let's go. So you need to really worship the Lord. Yes, I listen to it all the time. Even when on my phone, you will see more of that than anything else. That's my music. That's what gives me joy. That's what keeps me going. And I'm consistent in it. If I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to listen to is Yoruba praise. You know, it's something that will keep you going. Your native language. When you hear certain words in your native language, it helps you to keep going. It encourages you. 
There are Bibles in your native language you can listen to. It keeps you going. You know, so be in the presence of God. Evangelism. Oh, many believers do not believe in evangelism. Many believers are Christians, but they've never evangelized. They've never shared the word of God. They've never done anything that is proclaiming Jesus. They've never done anything to share or to bring someone else to Christ. Let me tell you, the main purpose of you being a believer, Trent, York, God bless you, thank you for joining in. The main purpose of you being a believer is to go to the world and preach the gospel. Was it, what is it to preach the gospel? Evangelism. Sharing the good news of Christ. Telling people and proclaiming his name all around the nation. When I'm driving to work, I listen to worship music. Oh God, that is wonderful. See, you're already doing something that is consistent in your journey, but you need to do more. So doing one thing is good, but you need to do more. So what I'm trying to encourage everybody listening to me tonight is that spend little time doing little things on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, to help you know that in your journey with Christ, you're doing your best. If your best is minimal, doesn't mean that you cannot grow from it. It just means the more you're doing it consistently, the more you start realizing that you're doing more without even knowing it. You could start off at five minutes, but because it becomes so consistent in you, you will end up doing three hours and you won't even feel it because it's become a lifestyle. Let us not go weary while doing good for in due season will surely rip. Amen. You will surely rip if you faint not. You will surely rip if you faint not. But you need to consistently keep going. Evangelism. Mark 16, verse 15 to 16. Let's go there quickly. Mark 15, verse, um, Mark 15, 16. Why am I keep saying 15? I don't know. Mark 16, verse 15 to 16. Amen. I believe it's a popular verse. We all know the verse by now. You know, so I want you, I want to encourage someone. Evangelism is key and pivotal to your work with Christ. Heaven rejoice when a soul is won to his kingdom. Heaven rejoice. How consistent are you in sharing the good news of Christ? Oh, thank you. A cup of tea as well. I'm feeling love tonight. <laughs> Prophet, you're feeling consistent tonight. Eh? Hey. <laughs> Mark 15. <laughs> Mark 16, sorry. Verse 15 to 16. Mark 16. Verse 15 to 16. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. How many of you are consistent in your evangelism? How many of you are consistent in sharing the word of God? Talking to a sister. If you make it a must, every day for the rest of my life, I'm going to speak to one person about Jesus. Just one Start with that. Just the one person. I'm going to lead one person to Christ every week and remain consistent in it. Before you know it, you will look back the whole year. When you review your year and you look back, you will see that you've won over 30, 40, 50 people to Christ. But it's you picking and determined and committed to saying one a day or two a day or two per week i'm gonna lead someone to christ i'm gonna evangelize i'm gonna tell someone about jesus i'm gonna scream it and shout it out loud consistency find out how you can remain consistent the power of consistency even in your journey with christ 
the power of consistency in your parenting, the power of consistency in your children, the power of consistency in your home, to your as a wife, as a spinster, 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 as a single lady, as a single man. How consistent are you in your service as a worker? How consistent are you? These things are pivotal. Now, I'm just going to say quick things of how you can remain consistent. I think through the message, I've kind of shared bits and bobs of how you can remain consistent. But the first thing I've put down here is being focused, knowing what you want to achieve. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you a Christian? Why are you a believer? Why am I a child of God? When you know the reason why you have chosen to give your life to God and say, I have chosen you as my Lord and personal Savior, what is your reason? What is your motive? If your reason is salvation and your motive is the love of Christ alone to do what is required and be obedient to his word will not be hard. To be committed and consistent will not be difficult. And through that brings gain, brings your breakthrough. Your commitment and your consistency is what will birth your success, is what will open you up to a productive life. Consistency. I've also said here, avoid negativity in the instance where you might not see the result you want. Don't beat yourself down. Don't allow anybody to beat you down. Set your own goals. Set your own targets. Have faith in God in whom you serve to make it possible. As a child, I used to obey him by the fear of hell. But I've come to learning is not enough. It's not. It's you determining. It's a choice. It's not fear. It's choice. Make the right choice for you. And through the choices you make, you'll be able to make the right decision. You'll be able to accept God for who he is in your life. And you'll be able to commit to him. You'll be able to be intimate with him. When you commit to a man as a woman, you, you spend, you make efforts, that's the word, to be consistent with that person. You make effort to communicate with that person. You make effort to, to do for that person what they require you to do. Why then can't we do the same for God? Why then can't we not commit to the Lord? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You're not able to do it does not mean it's the end of the world. How did you get to loving God? How did you make up your mind? Hmm. How did I get to loving God? I don't know. Encounter. Having an encounter with him. And just experiencing his true love. I've experienced a lot in my life that I know that if it's not for the love of God, I will not be here today. If it's not for the love of God, I will not be talking to you on this platform. God has taken me from place to place, from strength to strength that it almost makes me realize that I can achieve anything if I just commit it to his hands. I can face anything if I just look up to him alone and not see my flaws and not see my limitations and not see my barriers or even listen to what people might think or want to say. People can limit you if you allow them to. Listen to the Lord and stay with him. It's the same yesterday, it's the same today, and it's the same forevermore. That requires consistency. <laughs> you have to be consistent to remain in him and trust him through the journey. Thank you, God's my strength for that. You need to remain consistent just the way he is consistent with you. Why are you able to call on the Lord and believe that he will answer you? Because of his consistency. He's known for answering prayers. He's known for hearing your cry. He's known for his consistency in delivering. 
So why can't you remain consistent in asking? Why can't you remain consistent in studying his word? Why can't you remain consistent in the intimacy you have with him? There is power in consistency. I always say to my mentees as well, to-do list. Many of us work, but we don't write down. I cry out to the Lord and he hears me in my distress always. Exactly. Consistency. How are you being consistent? Hmm? I always say to my mentees, write down what you need to do. To-do list. Call me to is one of them. You taught me about the list. Yes. It helps you to prioritize. It helps you to focus. It helps you to know what, your, what it is that you're achieving that day. Many people say, oh, I'm so busy, there's no time. But if you write down what you actually achieve in a day, without doing a to-do list, but you do it after you've done the day, you realize you've achieved nothing. But yet, 24 hours went by and you said, I've done so much, I'm so busy. What were you doing? Account for it. But when you write down what you want to achieve in that day, you will find that no matter how tough the day is, no matter how difficult the day is, you will do 90% of what you've written down to do. You will achieve it because it's on your list. You're seeing it there. You want to tick it as done. You will do it. But many of us don't write down. We don't make a list of what we want to do. I have a daily list. And then in that daily list, I have a to-do list <laughs> in the daily list. I don't know if that makes sense. I write down what I want to achieve in the day from time to time to time to time. When I wake up, I'm going to pray. After praying, I'm going to do this. After doing this, I'm going to do that. If you want to see my to-do list, please follow me on Instagram at the Dynamic Woman and make sure you send me a message. And I will send you my to-do list, my daily list and my to-do list. The reason why I have a daily list and the to-do list is because in between my daily list, there are things that comes up. I run operation for the church, the Apostolic Movement Church. If you don't know, my husband is the pastor, amen. And I'm the graced to be the pastor's wife, graced by the almighty God. You know, running operation is not easy. If you do things on a whim or just as they come up, you're going to miss information. Things are going to be left out. But I have a habit of being able to keep track and ask questions. What is happening with this? What's going on with that? What's, what, what, why are we with that? Because why? I am keeping track of the information coming back to me through my to-do list. So if there's something I want to chase up, I write it down so that I can follow up. So to-do list can be created in advance. If there is something, oh, hi, McLaren. We, we're connecting on this platform. Well done. <laughs> God bless you. And I pray that the Lord will continue to encourage you in Jesus' name. So, you know, there are things you want to achieve, but at the same time, Things comes up. Counseling comes in. I'm sure McLaren can relate. Counseling comes in. Like you, like yourself, I also run my business. I am also self-employed. So how do I balance everything? It's prioritizing. My earring is having enough now. It's come up. It's prioritizing. Knowing when and how to do certain things. People will put their load on you. But it's you knowing how to accept it, how to focus, how to say, you know what? Today is Mama's Day. I'm focusing on me <laughs> because there are times where you need to do that. You need to focus on you so that you can get through what it is that you want to achieve. You can do the things you want to do and not fall behind. To-do list is very key to consistency. It keeps you in alignment. It helps you to keep going. So I've really talked a lot tonight. I hope it's been encouraging. I hope 
you know, through our interaction, you've it's opened your eyes to where you can improve on and it's taught you a lot about how you can be consistent and what the power of consistency can help you to achieve and how it can help you to do more in your daily life and in your lifestyle. But before I go tonight, I want to leave you with something. The more consistent you are about a thing, the more it's embedded into you, the more it becomes an habit and a pattern, and eventually that pattern leads to your lifestyle. And it becomes second nature. You wake up, you don't, once you get used to doing certain things consistently every day, you won't need to ask yourself, what am I doing now? Or what am I going to do next? Or I don't know what I'm doing. It will never come up because there will always be something to do. There will always be someone that needs encouragement. There's always a, I am committed to be on this platform with you. And like I said at the beginning of this video, that I was almost not able to make it tonight because there's so much I'm doing. There's so much activities. But because I have committed and in com my commitment to you, consistency is key. Many of you were waiting for me to come online tonight. So as a result of my consistency, I had to follow through. And that's really what birthed this message tonight. My experience, my journey, my truth. And that's why I wanted to share it with you tonight. Make consistency real in your life. Help yourself by writing it down. Do what you can within your limits. Do not overdo. Stretching your capacity is with time. Allow yourself to grow before you overcommit. Grow. Start with one. When you get comfortable with one, build up to two. When you get comfortable with two, build up to three. In every activity you choose to do tonight, going forward. Please make sure that you are consistent. Make sure that you are consistent. Matthew 5 verses 7 says, Let what you say be simple yes or no. Anything more than that comes from evil. Ouch. But it's a very powerful passage, and I always quote it to my husband in those days. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Don't commit to something and not come through. That thing really offends me. I'm sorry to say, I'm a child of God, but it offends me. Don't say yes and not be able to say commit and consistently achieve it because what will happen is if you're not consistent in your yes i'm not coming back to you but if i know that you're consistent in your no i'm definitely not coming back to you <laughs> but at least you're consistent and i know you for that i will only give to those around me that i know thank you robbie israel for that god bless you i know are consistent in their ways if you tell me yes and i believe your answer is yes i'm constantly going to return back to you because why your word is your word many of us are not consistent in our word simple word we're not consistent in what we say we push people away by not being consistent so be real with yourself. Thank you, Komi Toysin, for sharing on Facebook. God bless you. Be real with yourself and be committed and consistent in even with your tongue. What you say to people, how you carry yourself, how you dress, how you are approached, how you approach others, be consistent. Show yourself in good respect to be a good model to others. Model what you like to see. 
let the beatitudes in you be consistent as well kindness make kindness a living make meekness a living do it daily so you yourself can feel proud thank you afatati god bless you so you yourself can be proud of who you are and who you're becoming so those that see you they are sure of what you're going to say and what you're going to do even without asking you because of your consistency some people will know what time it is when it comes to you because of your consistency there are people that are consistent in going to the coffee shop and they are known by the coffee man that at this time on this day they're going to walk through the doors how sure can god be in expectance of you when it comes to your prayer life can god wait on you got to go battery load you have a blessed night day whatever time zone oh god bless you thank you please make sure you follow before you go god bless you i would love to see more of you yeah so make sure that your life begins to reflect what it is you want others to see about you by your activities by your daily commitment by your consistency thank you god bless you have a blessed night by your consistency i love you all with the love of god please send in your questions i've got time tonight i know last week i didn't get the chance to take questions i was so tired by the time we finished i was knackered so tonight i want to take questions please send in your questions i want to hear your thoughts your opinions what you have to say how you can help yourself to be better and not allow the situations of life get you so down that it stops you from being consistent talk to me strive for progress strive for progress in your journey as well it's very key strive for progress many of us are striving for perfection but we don't even know what perfection is because we can't do the simple things well but strive for progress when you see yourself going up a scale there you can meet perfection hmm? grow through the power of consistency sending your questions i'm listening any thoughts any ideas everybody's gone quiet <laughs> I hope I haven't bored you now. Please send in your thoughts. Any ideas, any word of affirmation, any encouragement for someone else that you want to share on this platform, please feel free to do so. Something you've taken from here that will be of benefit to your work with God or your personal life or engaging the power of consistency. I want to hear your thoughts anything thanks nice 2016 for joining back in god bless you anyone have anything to say please comment i want to see what you have to say amen consistency also helps you build stronger than you were yesterday the more you do something the more you say it, the more you grow in it the more you start to become fearless i believe you me Coming online was nerve-wracking, but the more I'm doing it, the more consistent I am with it, I'm becoming more relaxed in it. Prayer girl, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. I'm becoming more relaxed in it, and I'm growing daily. But that is consistency. That's what power of consistency does. It helps you to build in strength, in capacity. It helps you to grow. Blessings. He helps you to grow. He helps you to become comfortable in what God has called you to do. He helps you in the journey. He helps you. Many are afraid to go on evangelism. But the more you do it, the first step of speaking to someone, the first step of approaching someone and just talking to them about the love of Christ, the more comfortable you become, the more genuine you're able to approach others. And talk to them about God. And if you have anxiety as a person 
um, which we talked about a little bit last week. If you have anxiety uh, or fearful of approaching strangers, you will come to see that the first time of speaking to a friend about Jesus might generate a conversation that leads to a stranger getting involved. And then from there, it's you speaking to a stranger will bring about a level of confidence in you that will make you just think, oh, okay, I can do this. And the first one you do will lead to the second one, will lead to the third one, and it becomes an habit. But you have to commit to being consistent in doing it, to continually grow in it. I thank you all for watching. There are no questions. I guess I've done my job <laughs> for everyone not to have questions tonight. God bless you all. Following Jesus, thank you for joining in. God bless you. I love you with the love of Christ. As you know, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Please make sure you follow me at the Dynamic Woman on Instagram and on Facebook. My name is Reverend Josephine Enuma. I also have platform for my name, Josephine Enuma. Please make sure you follow. And on YouTube, I do a segment with my husband, John Enuma, Prophet John Enuma. It's also online here as Mr. John Enuma. Please make sure you follow. Eddie Kemara, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Make sure you follow him as well. He does live broadcast, Prophet's Couch, where he prophesy live to people. So if you want a word of prophecy, please make sure you go on his platform and follow him now. Trust me, you do not want to miss the anointing of God operating in his life. Honestly, I'm blown away daily as I've seen him grow in his journey with God. Thank you. Blessings, prophetess. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, so I think it's important that you follow him as well. We do a segment on YouTube where we have discussions like this. Sometimes it's myself, sometimes it's him as well. And as well, sometimes it's the two of us. When you have two of us on the platform, you know there's going to be a breakthrough. You know the anointing of God is going to be present. Amen. You know that miracle is about to take place. So engage. Do not forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Is John and Josephine Enuma. Go there right now as I'm talking to you and subscribe on our YouTube channel. My husband is also a life coach, a coach and mentors people through ministry, business, prayer. You know, there are things we want God to do for us, but we want time in and guidance in how to get to that place. Please visit his website, www.john enumaministries.com and you'll be able to find out more on how you can join in the discussion of life coaching and how you can be blessed from his skill as a life coach. I love you all so much for your love, for your support, for, your, for all that you do on being on this platform. I pray that I'll be able to bless you more. I know we're growing in ministry and we'll probably get busier but I'm committed to being on this platform on Saturdays. I'm not sure if I'll be able to keep to time because I've got a lot going on, but I'm committed that you will see me constantly on here. I love you so much. And please make sure you share, subscribe, follow on all platforms. Thank you, Nance. I love you. God bless you all with the love of God. See you tomorrow. Sunday service. Sorry, I forgot to mention. If you're in the UK and you know that you know that you're here and you want to be blessed, please visit us at Luton, 4 p.m. Luton, um, Grand Park Hall, 87 Park Street, LU13HG. You do not want to miss out. 4 p.m. Join us. Join the conversation. Follow our YouTube channel, Apostolic TV. And you can follow our Instagram as well, Apostolic Movement. You do not want to miss. We're on Twitter as well, Apoc Movement. Make sure you follow the discussion. Follow our platform. Share it. Send it out to friends. Apostolic TV, for those of you abroad, you can watch live. Our live stream is on Apostolic TV. I love you so much. I'm going to go find something to eat. I haven't eaten today. 
I don't know what is going on. Busy life. <laughs> I'm going to go get something to eat before the night is over. I love you all. I really, really thank you for watching and for following right through to the end. It takes commitment and consistency in listening. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. I really, really love you all. And um, I hope to see some of you tomorrow by the grace of God on, uh, on, or in Luton. <laughs> hope to see you in Luton. God bless you. Amen. I really appreciate you and I really enjoy this journey with you. Power of consistency. Be consistent in your journey. And I pray for you that the Lord Almighty will give you the grace and the strength to remain consistent in your journey with the Lord Jesus Christ and in your own endeavors, in your walk with him, in your walk as a single lady trusting God for marriage, in everything that you do and commit yourself to, the Lord will grant you the grace to fulfill and achieve it in Jesus' name. You will not be weary, you will not be tired. And in due season, you shall surely reap in the name of Jesus. The Lord grant you grace tonight and favor you mightily. In this month of notable miracle, miracle shall locate your household. Miracle of the unexpected shall find you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that thing that you're trusting God for that hasn't yet come through, by the sound of my voice reaching your household and the grace upon my husband's life, Prophet John Enuma, I speak into your life that that season, that thing that you're trusting God for be released to you now in the name of Jesus. Delay is not denial. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a blessed night. Glory be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.